2018 budget and the allegations of padding is our focus this morning and to discuss that with us is uh, a historian, a uh, budget historian as a matter of fact, an economist and a lawyer, Tunji Aguiyami. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming thank on the show so at this time. Thank In November you. you were here, just yes. shortly after the budget was presented to the National Assembly yeah. and um, did you see, for instance, that the situation we are in today concerning the budget, did you envisage it? Yes, I did. Um, I always know uh, that the Nigerian budget will, will be padded. I always know that. So there is something like padding in the 2018 budget, of despite course. 2017 oh. and yes. 2016, yes, I course. mean, coming from that point mm -hmm. where it was such a hot debate. Of course. And uh, we just, uh, heads were supposed to have rolled on that. But since that didn't happen, 2018 budget has, according to you, elements of padding. Where exactly would you see these paddings the precisely in the budget? <clears throat> the, excuse me. The details may are just coming in, and we are studying page by page now at the level of my own private research and that of my students. But let me give you just just two instances. The federal government intended and actually sought the approval of the National Assembly to borrow 5.5 billion naira, 5.5 billion dollars to finance some projects. Some of these projects and the power and things like that. These projects are also repeated in this same budget in the naira terms. They are repeated in the naira terms. Mm. So you have a problem in which you will borrow to finance a project and it will be reflected that that money is borrowed for the specific project. But the Naira the equivalent of it is also, pro that is called repetitive budgeting. Mm. In other words, you budget twice for the same thing. This has always been the recurrent decimal in the Nigerian budget. And we have cried to no avail that the system just avail itself of the services of its own professionals in the Nigerian university system interns, PhD interns in, in, the, in economic history, in economics, in finance. Professor D. Omolewa of the University of Lagos is an expert in this area. And several other professionals, Patu Tomi is, is an established professional in this area. I just don't know why we permit leakage and wastage to exist in our budget without plugging them. And these people, these, pro, these professionals, these patriots, they will do this work Pro bono publico, without being paid, they are ready to do it. They are, they are, they are, they are in large supply at the Obafemi Law University. So now we are at a point where the Senate is asking MDAs to come and defend their, project, their, their, their budgets, and this budget is not very likely to come through until sometimes in uh, March next year. Do you see the MDAs, I mean, passing that litmus test? I have to, no MDA. It will, be, it will be border on the miraculous for any MDA in Nigeria to pass the test of repetitive budgeting, double budgeting, cross budgeting, and you know padding. I mean, it, it will border on the miraculous because you, these are places where you find those who have specialized in the art and science of padding, and they have been doing this since 1954. I have identified this in my in my thesis. You know covering the period 1954 to 1999, of systemic leaching on the Nigerian budget. Even in the times when the very vociferous and flamboyant Okotiebo was the finance minister of Nigeria, these, these instances filled the Nigerian budget. And it is a shame. Because we are professionals, who could see, who could know, who could plug them. But governance is not directly linked to intellectualism. Our universities and their research firms do not drive governance. And it is just very sad. Very sad. So these um, methods of repeating things, you say it's been known since 1954. Yeah, exactly. In other words... Since all, Nigeria's federalism. In other words, all the senators and legislators that have been since 1954 are guilty or could be said to be co-conservators in repetitive budgeting? I, I, will be, I will be a little reticent in allocating criminal liability, but I will say that in terms of uh, joint and several culpability in respect of not plugging the loopholes and the excesses in the budget process, I, I think the Nigerian institutions have been a little derelict. 
the the direct the director of the budget office was in our studio a couple of days ago and he said there's nothing like there's no word like padding in the budgeting processes <laughs> it's like it's like saying that there's no word like rough driving in lagos uh, when when it, that's actually the art and science of lagos practices on the roads I mean, it's, 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 at any rate, it is expected that a civil servant who is actually the, the odd-down provocateur in the art of party will say that. I mean, it's very interesting. <laughs> but it actually happened. The only thing is that it does not exist in our law. It's not an offense in the law. So if you look at the Finance Management Control and Management Act of 1958, LFN uh, 2004, Cap F26, you will not find party as a criminal offense. But it is an act that goes on. We know. What does pardon mean? It means if you surreptitiously include into a budget an amount or a vote head that has not originally been planned by an MDA for the purposes of confusing or deceiving the National Assembly to pass it for appropriation. What do you do at the other end? You simply just leak it. For example, you can include if the federal government has only 120 federal government colleges. You can put 146 colleges. 